to understand this substitution method for what might appear to be a problem that is in the wrong chapter, or maybe in the wrong lesson, the integral of tangent. Okay, now if you're like, did I miss this? Is this on my rule sheet? No, it's not on your rule sheet. If it popped in your mind, secant squared, at least you're thinking, but of course, that's not the antiderivative, that would be the derivative. So, geez, how are we going to do the integral of tangent? Well, you're smart. You know it's got to have something to do with substitution method or else we wouldn't be talking about it. I feel like we need something that can cancel with something. And there's not a lot of somethings up here. So, let's stop looking at tangent and let's start looking at a fraction that's equal to tangent. Of course, that fraction goes back to where everything seems to go back to, trigonometry. In trigonometry, tangent is the same as sine over cosine. Uh, that's why you paid attention to those identities. Remember the identities from last year? Now, okay, now we have like two things, like so to speak, something that could be you something that could be the inside. Oh, right, the derivative cancels with the rest of the problem. If u equals sine, if u equals sine, the derivative is cosine. Oh, seems like there's a connection. Wait, but if u equals cosine, I'm doing it the other way. If u equals cosine, the derivative would be Negative sign. Oh, seems like it has a connection. Okay, now this is a problem that, uh, although it might seem like you can do it two ways, it still can only be done one way. There is a problem I'll give you guys as an extension that you can truly do two ways. Let me show you the wrong way. So you've got to decide what you're going to do right now. I hope you don't like plug your ears, but it helps to see the wrong way because a lot of us will do something like this at some point. Bless you. And Listen, there might not be any reason you know this is the wrong way. Like you might say, hey, u equals sine. We just said the derivative is cosine. That seems like a perfect fit here. The problem is, is when you go to start canceling. Now, a lot of us still solve the problem for dx. Hey, that is totally fine. Okay, that is totally fine. Maybe though, maybe if you're able to look quickly into the future, you're understanding why this is the wrong way right now. But let's continue because nothing I did here is wrong, at least the method I'm following. Um, U is supposed to be sine. Um, don't, don't change this cosine, okay? It's supposed to cancel. But again, this is why this is wrong. It doesn't cancel. It doesn't cancel when it's in the same place. It doesn't cancel when they're both in the denominator. It seemed like a good idea, but it just turns out that it's not the right way. Let's try it the other way, which is the right way. We are at a point that you don't have to wait for me. Um, I'm pausing because I know you can do the derivative of that, but I'm wondering if you can see how it's all going to substitute. That's the step that you have to be ready to do on your own. If you just want to make sure you're not losing track of stuff that's important, like a negative sign, I enjoyed listening to you guys describe the problems yesterday. Okay, you did a nice job showing the work. And in the case like this, I hope you can see. Okay, now as you get comfortable with this, don't skip these steps. Okay, like show the signs canceling. Like show the next 
sort of, I call it a doable integral. Okay, show this. And once again, do the integral. I, I said the first day that this is a step people forget. If you say, what do you mean they forget? Like they never actually do the integral of one over u. Somehow they just kind of write the answer as one over u. We have to do the integral. We have to do the antiderivative. Well, that's actually a good question for this problem. What in the world is the antiderivative of negative one over u? There was a group of girls that did this. Or excuse me, was it? Yes, it was a couple gals. But do all of us know that one over u is always going to be ln? The antiderivative of one over u is ln. Negative ln for this problem. of u, of cosine plus c. Guess what will happen next time you do the antiderivative of tangent? You're going to get negative ln of cosine plus c. Although I'm not big on this, it, it's definitely true. This is another rule. Okay, calculus has some rules to it. If you want to save yourself some time and energy, this could show up, this could end up on your little list of rules. Maybe there's some space at the bottom of that sheet that Bryce is getting out. But seriously, at the bottom of that sheet, this could end up as a rule. Ultimately, I want you to be able to do it. Don't, don't forsake all the good math we did. But the answer is going to be the same every time. I'm sure there's another trig function out there that you'll have to do, or should I say that you'll discover the rule, you know, like maybe cotangent, okay, or some other trig function. So think about what we did here, how we changed the way it was written. I must have had some time on my hands, so I put this as a little screen. Basically, this is our last problem. I just want you to realize why it's slightly different. It's called a definite integral. Sometimes we're not big on the vocabulary, but a definite integral just means there's a definite answer, meaning a number answer. Do you notice we are going A to B? Okay, this is kind of like back to the last chapter. We're actually finding the area from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so if you see the limits of integration, that's A to B, then make sure you're ready for that last step. The textbook mixes these into the assignment. They'll just suddenly, all of a sudden, have a problem that has an A to B. So just notice it, but um, it, makes one, it makes for one more good problem for us to try to figure out what to do with the substitution method. If you're trying to engage right now, you may or have already done this, but let me encourage the rest of you. Can you find a u? Can you find something whose derivative cancels with the rest of the problem? We did have a group that was the group two yesterday. They mess around with the e. And it's common. It's common to use the exponent. That doesn't mean that you always use the exponent. But again, it's common. But really, you should be saying it's correct because the derivative of tangent is going to cancel with the rest of the problem. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now, I showed this back on the first or second day, and sometimes it was too early, but I still do it in case I have somebody that's like, yeah, I get that. But there's basically like a, almost like a, a shortcut here where we could quickly recognize that these two boxes are the same. 
I mean, they're like exactly the same. I don't even have to worry about like an extra coefficient dividing over here, over there. There can be a time where you get to the point where you're like, yeah, this problem is really nothing more than e to the u du. So I skipped all the division stuff over here. I skipped canceling and crossing off secant squares. Okay, now be careful. I need to do the antiderivative. Kind of the funny thing is, is that the antiderivative is the same thing. But you have to realize that when I write down e to the u, or more, more appropriately, e to the tangent of x, I have done the antiderivative. Again, it's the same thing. Okay, and then, well, I would imagine that you uh, haven't forgotten, but it's f of b, f of a. Um, be careful that you do those in the right order. e to the tangent of pi over 4. Yes, that is kind of a mathematical answer. Yes, you could use a calculator in this class. But um, the tangent of pi over 4 actually just comes out to be the number 1. We could go back to the unit circle to see that, but this comes out to be 1, so it's e to the 1, which is e. Again, don't be scared to tinker around on a calculator. Tangent of 0 is 0, but that's e to the 0, which is not 0. e to the 0, of course, is 1. So f of b minus f of a is e minus 1. e minus 1, kind of being a little loosey-goosey with the equal signs here, but essentially the answer to the integral is e minus 1. All right, so a definite integral just means that there's a number answer. All right, so we kind of use the exit ticket method to basically uh, say, for me, to, a way to say, I want you to be able to do these. Sometimes I'm giving you problems, though, that are actually a little harder on the difficulty level, because when you're in the classroom, you got people around, you're thinking math, so I am challenging you a little bit with these two. They're not bonus problems, though. Eventually, it's a problem that you solve on your own. Just use the blank side of the paper. The other side of the paper has some old math on it. Just use the blank side. Just use the blank side. <laughs> 